And we don't do we don't do politics in this uh, in this little group, but we do do current affairs sometimes or other. And I don't know if you've been following the news, but there's a vacant job at the palace. <laughs> <laughs> and Only one. <laughs> maybe maybe <laughs> be more than one. We'll we'll come to that. But uh, what I wanted to do tonight was just give you a, a, a sort of introduction to the fact that I'm I'm going to do some prescription speeches on the history of English land law. And there'll be about 25 of them. But if things go down well tonight, what I was going to say is perhaps you just give me the advance certificate now. <laughs> and I won't bother with them. Okay? Bribery works. <laughs> <laughs> what I'll say tonight is that if you, when you come back from uh, holiday, or you've just been to Rome in the sunshine, and uh, you come back and you fly, you fly into this country, when you look down into the rolling English countryside, then one of the things that should strike you is how well organized it is. And it, it really is, compared to a lot of countries, it's very well organized. And there are two reasons for it being so well organized. One is the way the aristocracy have done things over the years. And the other is really English land law and its selfishness and culpability. I won't, I won't deal with that uh, too much tonight. What I want to do is just test your understanding of the way things are and perhaps elevate you a little a little in life. Um, so the thing about the aristocracy is that it's it's quintessentially English. That's why we have it. It's English through and through and starts off obviously with the Queen, the top of the tree at the moment. And then the next level down is who's next level down from the Queen? Charles. Charles, excellent, what a knowledgeable audience this is. And the next level down from that. Any guesses? Who? Mm. Oh, sorry? Mm. Uh, yes, but I want the I want the actual title of Such the aristocrat. Those of you who have X and double X on your envelope, open it up. You haven't won anything. And you are a Duke. Duke and Duchess. Uh, no. Top of the tree. And it's a good old English title in the top of the tree of the aristocracy. Good old English title, but it's not. French. Imported a long time ago, 1066, William, Duke of Normandy, came over and hammered the living day out of the English, stayed a while, created the aristocracy from then. So, I don't care if you're called the Duke of Edinburgh. You're French. <laughs> I'm nothing against the French. I have some good friends and I like it. It's just a, well, it's not a good old English title. But there it is, top of the tree. Who's next? Who's next in the, in the level of aristocracy? Open your envelope Z and double Z. You are Marquis. Oh, Marquis, we say in this country. Marquis, maybe in Canada. Marquis. Marquis and Marquess or Marchioness, whichever. Well, you have weddings outside, isn't it? <laughs> Good old English title? No. 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 It's a mix of Welsh and French. It really means guardian of the Welsh borders. Keep the Welsh under control. I'm sorry if anybody's Welsh. But that's, that's, <laughs> that's what it is. We don't have any Marcuses around at the moment. The most prominent one was born in South Africa, lived there all his life, but never mind, he's an English Marcus. So, uh, English? Great not. But never mind, never mind. Good old English aristocracy keeps us all going. So it keeps the newspapers going anyway, that's for sure. One of the things you have to understand is that by the time we've got past Duke and Marquis, a lot of the rolling English countryside has been owned. Um, the records say that there are 283 families who own most of the countryside outside the towns and cities. 
282 once Harry and Meghan were both. <laughs> Quite incredible, but they're the people who've kept the countryside organised. Who comes next in the hierarchy? Who's next most important? Um, uh, well, I'm still Open your envelope A and AA. Not her uh, less. They didn't actually try her less for a while, but they called it, even in those days, earless. I was just saying, could be earless. What's this ear? So uh, it didn't go down terribly well. Now, the Earl, wow. I mean, the most famous Earl is probably Earl Spencer, Princess Diana's father. I don't know if you've heard of Earl Spencer. Good old English, uh, good old English title, Earl. Is it? No. 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 Uh, brought over from Norway, where the Earls, or the Jarls as they call them, uh, were the people in charge. Got imported sometime about the time King Canute back in 1200 or so, and not developed ever since. So, that's the English aristocracy so far. It did not mean terribly English, but never mind. Um, who comes after? Who comes after an Earl? Baron. Who said that? Okay. Oh, open your uh, envelope, M and double M. Viscountess. Viscountess and Viscount, yeah. Wow, <laughs> who's the most famous one of that? Probably Viscount Lindsay, who's not Princess Margaret's uh, son. Great English aristocratic title, Viscount. <coughs> French. Viscount is an admiral in France, or was in the 17th century. So, most of the Viscounts are, uh, well, they're sort of the sons and daughters, sons of earls. I ought to mention at this point, I have to be careful in these days of equality, that women don't count for much in the aristocracy. Yeah. Not, not really. I mean, if you're a countess, okay. If you're a duchess, if the duke dies, you get called the dowager duchess. Like, like the old lady in Downton Abbey, you know, like you said. So, the women have never done too well in the aristocracy. But now, we're coming to something that really matters, something really English. Um, what's the next one down? Sorry? Lord May. Not, not quite, no. Open your envelope Y and double Y. Sorry, it's a bit more, more serious than I thought it would be. Okay, Y and double Y. Baron and Baroness. There was one in there somewhere. Yeah. Um, English? Pretty much German. But, you know, we got by. Barons have been around a long time, mostly robber barons. And you think of it this way, their, their, uh, their whole presence in the English countryside has been kind of like, if you think back to the film The Godfather, um, you know, The Godfather, the baron was the guy who was the head of the mafia in England all through the centuries. Baron, you're a baron. You are someone, robber baron. You've got that robber baron look around you, I think. Yes. You could be the baron. 